This is This Week in Maine's History. I'm here at the Maine Historical Society with Jamie Rice. And Jamie, tell me what we're talking about today. So this week, on March 4th, 1817, John Holmes of Alfred, Maine, took his seat in U.S. Congress as a representative of Massachusetts. Since the District of Maine was part of Massachusetts, occasionally representation at the federal level would be from Maine. John Holmes was instrumental in the statehood process. He was a big proponent of separating from Massachusetts later in his political career, but early on was on the other side of the fence. So he changed his views over time, but as we get into the last effort for separation from Massachusetts, he was a big proponent. So here we have a gown that was worn by his wife while they were living in Washington. It's a circa 1820s gown that they wore to society events. So for our exhibition, as uh, the state of mind um, becoming Maine, we are going to be exhibiting three of Sally Holmes' gowns, and we're going to rotate them over time, that's so best for the clothing, and do some conservation prep work in preparation for making this available to the public. These three different dresses, how were they preserved? They passed down through Sally Goodnow, and eventually to her children, and her daughter donated them to Maine Historical Society. So her dresses stayed in her family, Yes, until the 1940s when they were donated here. So. Abby Zaldowski, nice to meet you. Tell me um, a little bit about the work that you're doing on this Sally Holmes dress. There's a, a slight black tint to it, probably some kind of soot. You can see the underarm, very typical perspiration, and that's gonna slowly eat away at the textile. This whole um, top embellishment was all intertwined. So what I did initially was remove this piece. This whole side is finished and this is yet to be done. Is this indicative of what women were wearing at that time? For evening, yes. Off the shoulder, you would show your arms and your neckline in the evening, but during the day you'd be more covered up. The waistline is moving along as the decade continues. So in the early 1800s, the waistline is really up high. And then, it, yes, and then it starts to move down and down and down. Children dress just like their parents. Was this like a christening dress? No. This was an everyday wear? Wow, know, it's, it's beautiful and it's embellished. Yes. Like, I, as a mom myself, I'm thinking, how would you keep that clean? Exactly, yeah. Even their dolls, they would dress them in the fashions of the day. You can learn more about Sally Holmes, her gowns, and how Maine became a state at the State of Mind exhibit, which opens on March 13th. That idea of clothing being handed down, kept in the same family for decade after decade after decade, just seems so foreign to us now. It does. Well, I also think clothing was um, a little more durable back then. Probably, yeah. Yeah, built to last. Yeah. It was, not, it was not a throwaway society. Right, right. You're not passing down that old t-shirt that yeah. you've had for 20 years, although some of us are.